If you're trying to build bicycle frames and you're not familiar with and using trigonometry, you're really missing out. Let me show you what I mean. When I was in high school, I took math classes and I learned basic trigonometry enough to like pass the tests, but I didn't apply it much in my life because who applies trigonometry in your life? I didn't really realize you could. They make these test questions to illustrate how you might use it, but like, come on, who's really gonna use it? And uh, so anyway, like 10 years later, I'm like actually doing a lot of fabrication stuff and I was watching a, probably a Tom Lipton YouTube video uh, or, or someone explaining how trigonometry is useful in the shop and I was really interested because you sound so cool when you start talking about, you know, cosines and tangents and trigonometry. And it's actually really simple to apply though. And so here's some examples. This here is a unicron fork, right? And you know in the bike world that you have the main, uh, the main dimensions of the fork are your, uh, your axle to crown and then your rake, which is your offset. And so you could just draw a right triangle in here and then that might let you know what angle you have up here which is like the miter angle of the fork right and so that was one of the first applications where I I wanted to know what what like what angle do I set this up at to make that miter so that it comes out right you could guess and check you could try and measure it with a protractor if you have CAD software that can model something like this and you're good with CAD you could just figure it out in CAD but I didn't know how to use CAD at that point and so uh, I just uh, started to use trig and it was very helpful to me so the cool thing about it is you don't need to be very good at it at all and you can figure it out and hobble your way through it. And if you use it more, then you get more familiar with it. I haven't been doing as much lately because I've gotten so good with the CAD software that I use that when I need to figure out a random length or an angle where uh, trigonometry would be useful, it's actually usually faster for me and easier because I'm lazy to put it in my computer and do that. But I, that used to not be the case at all. And I think for a lot of frame builders, you're not working out of CAD. There's no real reason you would need to learn uh, you know, 3D modeling or 2D modeling and have CAD software in, on a computer in your shop ready to go. And so I think it's worth learning. If we draw this up here, it's real simple. You know, you have, you have your steerer is that line and then perpendicular to that, you have your rake, that's an R for rake. And then we'll say right here is the, the crown on your steerer. And now you have, those are your fork legs, right? So this is the axis of your steerer. This is the center of your axle for your, for your hub. Uh, this is a theoretical point in space that doesn't exist physically in the fork. And so if you know that your axle to crown is like 395 millimeters, and if it, you know, you know, so that's your A to C, axle to crown, and if you know that your rake is like, you know, 45 millimeters, then you can actually figure out what this, you know, they say theta for like an unknown angle, but you can figure out what that angle is pretty easily. I don't even remember how to do it. We're gonna figure it out together. So the, the cheat sheet way to remember these is SoKatoa. And if you don't know Trig at all, you just go to, you, you know, you're on YouTube, right? Just go to watch some other YouTube videos where people explain basic Trig. I'm just trying to illustrate how it's useful to frame building and then it's very easy to learn. Um, but there's sine, cosine, and tangent are the three main trigonometry functions. And so, uh, they relate to the different parts of the triangle, right? So you have a right triangle and you have the hypotenuse, which is the long one. And then you have the adjacent side, you know, if your angle is here, you have the adjacent side and you have the opposite side of the triangle. And so with these variables, if you have these two, you can solve for, you know, like you need a couple pieces and then you can solve for the rest of it, right? And so in this situation, this is our angle right here. We have the opposite and we have the hypotenuse. Those are the known values that we have. So the opposite and the hypotenuse are the ones we have. So we're gonna use a sine function. And it's a sine of theta equals, so it's opposite over hypotenuse. So it would be 45, over 395. 
So sine of this angle equals that. And so you can get out your calculator and you can solve for that. So this is uh, sine of theta equals that. So that means we're trying to figure out what this degree is. And so if we knew the number of degrees, then we could type into our calculator the number of degrees, and then you press the sign button, and then it would tell you what this is equal to, and you would be trying to solve for the numerator or the denominator, and you'd have to cross multiply or whatever to solve for that, which is just basic algebra. But uh, in this instance, we don't know theta, we don't know that angle, so we have to use arc sine. We know what this is, so we type in this value, and then we hit the arc sine button, and it tells us what the angle is. So if you take 45 divided by 395 equals, and then you go arc sine, it tells you 6.54 degrees. So this is a fancy machinist calculator that I have because it does all this cool stuff that's useful to machining. But if you have any scientific or graphing calculator, or even the, the scientific version of the calculator that comes on an iPhone or a smartphone, it'll do this the same. There's nothing fancy going on here with this particular calculator in this application. And so now, 6.54 degrees, do I buy that? Well, it looks like a shallow angle to me, I buy that. If I was unsure that I had done it right, it's pretty easy to plug it back in to the, the series of formulas here and check it to see if it looks right. So now that I know that, that this is my miter angle, 6.54 degrees, I walked over to my milling machine, and if I had uh, when I went to miter these, I had a unicrown fork mitering fixture. I might talk about that someday. And I would just use the digital angle gauge. There's different ways to set up an angle on the milling machine. But, you know, now I have a number that this corresponds to. And so when I tilt my fixture a certain amount, um, and I had to use, on the bridge port, you can't really miter unicrown fork blades very well. So I had a 90 degree head that uh, actually gets the, um, the spindle in this orientation. But anyway... Uh, it makes it real easy to figure that out. So let me point out some other instances where I think trigonometry is useful for bike frame building. So here's another one, uh, the bridge on the rear of the bike. Now, you can just fit this in with a hand file or a Dremel or something, or you can just kind of guesstimate the angle. But I like cutting these bridges uh, with the angle, um, I liked cutting these on the bridge port and I needed to know what the miter angle was and I didn't like doing a whole bunch of guess and check, guess and check, and I wanted it to fit nice. And so you can establish this angle even if you don't have a good model of it in bike CAD and sometimes you got curvy stays and it's hard to accurately model that. And so what I would do is I would, you know, this is half inch diameter tubing and so I'd take a measurement at roughly the bottom of the tube and then I would take another measurement you know of the width between the tubes I take a measurement of the width down here and then I would move up half of an inch in this axis and I'd take another measurement of the width and then you can piece together the uh, the angle which I mean if you do it over a longer stretch is going to be more accurate but let me draw that up because with trig with this sort of thing, finding the triangle is like the hard part. And so you need to practice conceptualizing that in different settings. And then when you, when you get good at that, then it becomes very easy. So this is looking at the rear end of the frame like this. So these are the stays. And this is where we want our bridge to be. And we know that this bridge is half inch and we know that these, well, it doesn't even matter what the diameter of the stays are. So, if I drew a little teeny tiny triangle in here, I would know that this is the right angle, and my angle is way down here, it's real tiny, and then this would be the hypotenuse, and the adjacent, and the opposite. So if I draw that bigger, you know, I mean, that's the bridge, right? So you can do the same thing over the longer length of this. You could mark your spot right here and then you could go you know four inches where the curve where the tubes curve you need to be mindful of that so you're measuring the right angle but if they're straight then you can do it over a longer distance and uh, you know so you just you know you're trying to solve again for theta and you know uh, you can figure out what this um, this is the opposite you can figure out what that is because if you were to do a, just you know draw out the symmetry of it, sorry this isn't more symmetrical looking. You know this is the center line of everything on the bike, and then you know this the the this distance here is established by you, however much space you have to work with. So this is your uh, adjacent length, and then uh, your hypotenuse 
is actually not part of the equation because you're not solving for that, you're solving for theta. Um, and you just need to know these values. So you would take, uh, you would take this measurement right here, the, f the full width, and then you take this measurement and you would subtract this one from this one. And so that just negates this part, right? You just got rid of that. And so it gives you this sliver plus this sliver, which I know don't look symmetrical here. And then you divide that by two. And so then you would have this, this figure, right? That's pretty obvious. Um, so you would have this value and you'd have this value. And with those, you have opposite over adjacent, which is a different sine function actually. So I'll write these out again. So, ka, toa, so this time it's a tangent function, t for tangent, opposite over adjacent. So tangent of theta equals opposite, which, you know, what would it be in this case? Let's say it's like 15 millimeters. And we'll say that that's like 70 millimeters or something. I don't know. You know, you, it would depend on the circumstances of the frame you're working with. And so again, it would be an arc tangent function. You would, you would uh, divide these and then you would hit arc tangent and it would give you the angle that you needed to miter at from that orientation. And so uh, I'm not particularly good at doing this off the top of my head. I usually have to write out the key. I'm not particularly fast at it. Sometimes CAD is easier, but I think this unlocks a lot of potential when you realize that there is actually a way to measure an angle without getting out a bevel protractor, without having some sort of fancy angle gauge. Uh, you can measure stuff that you can't measure, right? That's the beauty of this is that, the, you know, if, if you had the lengths of things and you needed to find the angle or if you had the angle of something and you wanted to figure out what length then, you can put it all together because there is a relationship that is defined uh, by just a couple pieces. And so even when you don't have all of them, uh, you can get at them. So I made this frame fixture about two and a half years ago, and when I did, I didn't know how to use CAD software, I didn't have a CNC mill, I didn't even have a rotary table, which is this uh, machining tool that you can mount your piece to, and then with every time you crank the handle, it uh, rotates the part a certain angular you know, known amount, and you can lay out scales like this. You know, whereas these are linear scales, this is an angular scale. And so in this video that I made two and a half years ago that's on this YouTube channel, it's 20 minutes long, and I talk all about the setup and the math and how I got this scale on here. And so if you're interested in this nerdy shit, you should go check that video out. I think it helps illustrate a lot of these same points. Clementine Puppy Paws is really where I learned to love math. You know, we'll, de we'll every night we'll just talk about Euclid and Euler, Pythagoras. You know, she's she's uh, she's the inspiration for all the math that I do here. So just remember this when you're trying to figure out an angle you can't measure, or you have the angle and you're trying to figure figure out the length of something and you just can't get your calipers over it because something's in the way. Um, you don't need to remember it off the top of your head because it's always a YouTube video away. Just brush up. There's a billion YouTube videos that explain how to do it. Or you can just figure it out if you remember SoKatoa and you're looking at your calculator. You'll figure it out in a couple minutes. So uh, yeah, I hope this helps you in the shop and thanks for watching.